where this city is amped up. Game five, Celtics Warriors tonight from San Francisco tied at two apiece. That duo on the verge of breaking through to a whole new level. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, who I think is D-Wade 2.0. Do the Celtics hang that record 18th banner? Or does Stephen Curry carry Golden State as he did in one of the great finals performances of all time, 43 in game number four? Well, a guy who may very well have some answers is with us. We all recognize Sir Charles, Charles Barkley. Charles, how are you? Man, I'm doing great, Rich. Thank you guys for having me. Big week for you guys, huh? It is a it's an enormous week and it's a little bit crazy if uh, you've been tuning in. Uh, Charles, I know you're here in Boston. You're just escaping the Scottsdale heat. You're going to play a little golf up at Cape Cod. Uh, you're I'm going to go back your rookie season uh, with, with my 76ers back in 1985. You lost a playoff series uh, to the Boston Celtics. Uh, generally, what's been your experience uh, with Boston fans who will be out in force here this week at the country club? They are tremendous. Uh, one of the great honors and pleasures of my life was playing at the Boston Garden. They're very knowledgeable. They're intense. Uh, they, uh, Boston's one of the great, I mean, you know, you talk about Philadelphia, Boston, New York, L.A. Those are three or four of the greatest sports cities in the world. And uh, throw Chicago in there also. Charles, part of uh, what we're here to celebrate this week is what happened here, well, over 100 years ago when a fellow by the name of Francis we met, we met was an amateur and did something that no amateur had ever done before. But I dare say Francis we met might not have anything on you in terms of an accomplishment because the whole world was invested in, in your golf swing getting better. I, honestly, I've never seen anybody pull so hard for one man to overcome. we got to take a look at this golf swing, Charles. you got to tell us how you managed to overcome, well, I, I don't want to use the word, but I'm just going to say that I think it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen, to see somebody go from, well, let's take a look at this golf swing, Charles, if, you, if you'll humor us just a little bit. I've linked them up, and you seem to be a little faster on the right. I, I'm just a little faster. We'll slow it down for you. And, uh, of course, same sort of backswing, but you do have, there you go, beautiful. You know, perfect, quite, Brando. Yeah, Looks yeah, great. Absolutely perfect. Charles, you got to be happy with your game, don't you? I mean, how did you do this? Well, I give all the credit to Stan Utley. You know, I met Stan Utley at uh, Tom Lane. Because, you know, Brandon, I quit playing golf for probably 10, 15 years. I only played in charity events with my friends. And I met Stan Utley at Tom Lehman's golf tournament about four years ago. And he asked to work with me. And I said, you know, Stan, I really don't even play anymore. I just play in a couple of charity events for friends. It's not fun for me to play. And he said, give me, just give me a couple days. And Brando, I gotta tell you something. When I was playing golf, I had about 12 guys talking to me, standing over the ball. Sorry for this ball. I had about 12 <laughs> voices in my head, standing over the ball. I had no idea who was talking to me at what time, takeaway, backswing, ball position. Cause I took too many lessons. Uh, that's, the, that's the true reason. I just took too many lessons. And uh, when I started working with Stan, he said, just forget those other 12 teachers and listen to my voice. <laughs> just listen. To he did. He said, just close your eyes and listen to my voice. And it's been amazing. And I just want to thank, thank Stan Utley because, man, it, it's, been, it's fun to play again. I mean, I, I, I'm an old fat right. dude. I play golf every day. There's nothing else I can do in the world <laughs> other than golf and fish. So Stan Utley saved my life. Uh, that's terrific. Stan's been a, long, a good friend of mine for a long, long time. I liken him to like this uh, sort of this era's Harvey Pinnock. He takes something difficult, makes it simple. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about what you make look simple. Is when you're on this desk, not this desk, but your desk. When you're you're on that desk and you're, I mean, you're the best there is. But sometimes you get in a little hot water uh, with uh, some of the players that you criticize. I'm just wondering how you take that criticism, how you handle that criticism, and does it ever bother you? Well, you know, uh, and first of all, Brando, you've probably been in the same, uh, same boat also when guys get mad. But I learned something from Dr. J. When I first became a star, I think it was my third year in the NBA, they were starting to come to me and ask me questions. Because my first couple of years, they never came to me. It was Doc, Moses, Maurice Cheeks, Andrew, Tony, Bobby Jones, those guys. The, the media never talked to me in my first two years in the NBA. So my third year... I started, I became an all-star and started having success. 
And Dr. J says something to me that sticks with me to this day. He says, first question you ask yourself, is the criticism fair? And I said, what? He says, the first question as a player, you have to ask yourself, is the criticism fair? And like I say, I can go back and look at my 21 years. None of my criticisms have been personal. I think they all been fair. When I get a call from a player or a player's agent, I explain to them why I said what I said. But I told you that I say, I'm never gonna be personal. Our job is not to play God, judge, and jury. I'm gonna judge you strictly on basketball. I do not care what you do in your personal life. That's none of my business. But this is why I criticize you. So that and, and there's been a couple times that I was like, yo, man, I'm not, I gotta do my job. Uh, you know, because the fans see what's happening. Uh, you know, when I see a guy melt down on the golf course or hit a bad shot and you guys have to call him out on it, that's fair. I mean, cause in the thing that drives me crazy, Brando, they never call me when I said good stuff about them. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. That's so I true. Can say, I can say 10 great things about a player. He <laughs> never calls me. His agent never calls him and says, thank you for the kind words. I say one bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> they want to know why did I say that. So that's that, that's really the only time I get frustrated. I say, yo, man, you guys never call me when I say great stuff about you. <laughs> Good, Paul. <laughs> hey, Charles, it's Paul here. Uh, we've never met, but nice to see you uh, over Zoom. And uh, I know you're a golf nut. I've heard so much about you and seen you so much on TV. And I, I, I obviously want to know where, where uh, as much as you've played golf on all the best golf courses in America, have you managed to go overseas and play some of our great Lynx golf courses over in Europe? Or have you got plans to do so? I, I, I really, I've always wanted to do it. But I've been, I've been, I've been, hey, Paul, I've been in a 20-year slump. So I don't think I want to take my game overseas in a slump. I really want to do that. I, you know, I just had one of the great experiences of my life. I played with Darren Clark about two weeks ago in a senior pro-am, and he was just as awesome as I thought he would be. But I normally play with John Daly, who's a great friend of mine, but I want to play with Darren Clark. And it was one of the coolest experiences of my life playing with him. And uh, so I, I want to go overseas. And hopefully, I think the way I'm trending, I hope to be back in single digits by the end of this summer. Because wow. I'm going to play golf yeah. every day for the next Ooh. three months, basically. So I'm hoping to be back sure. in single digits as far as a handicap. And then, listen, as long as I go and play a great course, I don't go overboard about what I shoot. I just want to be somewhat competitive. Well, you know, sure. you're, you're with two of the great Lynx players there and John Daly and Darren Clark of the modern era. So <laughs> you're right. in good shape there, not just uh, on the golf course, but I'm sure often you'd have good company as well, too. And yeah. uh, the many uh, well, clubs we have to experience. Uh, there's, those are two guys that I can play golf with, but we have a lot more fun off the golf course. Yeah. Uh, Charles, maybe to win Tahoe in a few weeks. Uh, you see that on Golf Channel and NBC. I know you're friendly with, with Phil, spent some time with him. Uh, have you spoken to Phil lately, Charles? And, and are you at all concerned about his gambling, that perhaps it clouded his judgment or influenced where he's at now? Well, I talked to Phil about an hour ago because I was watching you guys, and I thought Jaime made... Jaime and Michael Collins, I thought both did a really good job. But Phil was great in the press conference today, and I sent him a text to tell him, man, I'm really proud you handled that stuff well today. That was the extent of the text chain. Listen, uh, Phil is a great friend of mine. Dustin, Dustin is a casual friend of mine, but Phil is a great friend of mine. I wish him nothing but the best. I'm hoping for nothing for, but the best. Hey, listen, I got the same gambling bug. Uh, I'm a gambling idiot, too. Uh, so I can't criticize anybody's gambling habits. I love to gamble. I'm going to keep gambling. Uh, but it can get crazy at times. Uh, you, that's the one thing you have to really be careful. And I don't, listen, and Rich, to answer your question, I don't know how much of an effect this uh, thing has had on his gambling, to be honest with you. That's, that's not fair for me to speculate. But like I say, Phil is a great friend of mine. I want to see him do well. And the thing that bothers me the most, I think some of the criticism is, man, it's really gotten personal. 
I think you can disagree with him playing, but man, some of these personal attacks, because let's be honest, other than Tiger Woods, no golfer has had more effect on golf in the last 25 to 30 years than Phil Mickelson. Tiger is like Michael Jordan. He's a supernova. But other guys like Carl Malone, myself, have had to help the game. Uh, Patrick Ewing, we've helped the game also. But Phil is the next guy after Tiger. Ty I mean, he has carried the PGA Tour other than Tiger Woods for the last 30 years. And I hate to see some of the negativity directed toward him. And some of it is self-inflicted. Some of it is 100% self-inflicted. But I hate to see these personal attacks because, hey, we all got to live our own life and make our own decisions. Yeah. And when you got these two golfing things, they got to find a way. Let's be real. They got to find a way to work together uh, because I don't know how long this live thing is going to be around. But at some point, they going to have to work together because, man, this negativity around golf right now is not, you know, that old saying that any type of publicity is good. No, that's not good. They need to find Agreed, a way. Charles. Like, okay, we can agree. One of my favorite fra phrases is we agree to disagree because I don't want these guys bad mouth and feel Dustin. You know, I don't want them doing that because it's just not good for the game overall because those are two of the greatest players who ever lived. And they're going to be in the Hall of Fame. I, I mean, Phil's already in the Hall of Fame, and Dustin's going to be in there one day. Uh, so, Charles, uh, I, none of that is... We, we, we're running out of time, Charles. None of that is in dispute. Phil's contributions to the game, his fame and popularity, been so entertaining. But it would be, we don't have time to discuss it, it would be like LeBron James starting a rival league to the NBA and recruiting players. And that's essentially what happened. But that said, let, I just before we go, are you still sticking with the Boston Celtics uh, as your pick to win it all? I had the Boston Celtics in the six. And I'm going to stick with them, brother. They're going to win tonight. They're going to wrap it up next game. And I'm going to disagree with you on that. I've got Stephen Curry, uh, Stephen Curry and the Warriors, and Curry becomes one of the top ten players of all time. By the way, that guy right Charles, thank you so much. I thank think you, Charles. The greatest you guys are heavy great. set. I can't wait for the rest of the week. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Charles. You're amazing, and, and we loved having you on. Uh, I, still among the most exciting plays to watch in hoop history, Charles Barkley getting a rebound, and at about 6'5 and 270 pounds, rumbling down the floor, exploding for a dunk. Greatest we'll call him heavy set player of all time, and Celtic fans uh, have had a few hefty players in their day. I'm talking about Big Baby, uh, Scal, and late stage, late career, Shaquille O'Neal, who is... Uh, one of Charles's partners on their award-winning show, Inside the NBA with Ernie Johnson, Kenny Smith on TNT.